Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for the service. We thank God for all those who have ministered so far. I'm really thankful to God for someone like Oni who has been bugging me that she has a word from the Lord. Amen. And she's been working on that for the past uh, two weeks. And I, I thank God that God is speaking to us. There's one thing I want to say. If you don't articulate and express the gift of God, you will not see the manifestation of that gift. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We think that they are children today. Tomorrow when they are great preachers, you wonder where they came from. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we need to train our children. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to allow them, give them the opportunity. That's why I'm always, always excited to give opportunities to the younger folks to do what God is impressing in their heart, especially when they come to you and say, I have a word from God. Oh, I want to do this. Amen. For the Lord. Uh, thank God for those who travel, like Brother Eddie Bear, who is back all the way from Cameroon. You're welcome, sir. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Back to the Very welcome. I hope everything went well. Glad to be in the house. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, greetings from Amichungo. Uh, she's technologically challenged, so she could not Amen. get into the service. Uh, the people... Her daughter, we used to help her come in, is out of, has gone out of state for school, so she's having trouble. But she sends her greetings. Uh, Pandaka also, thank you for coming in. He really wanted to be live, uh, but he has some challenges, so he had to record uh, the message to greet the church. So let us remember the, the people in the church. When you remember them, pray for them, and I uh, believe that the Lord will bless you and bless them also as you water them. Hallelujah. Uh, there's an announcement I'm going to do quickly before we go into the message for today. It's concerning the uh, the end of the fast. On Saturday, we shall be meeting at an address that will be communicated to us. Um, I don't know if Brother Emmanuel has it. He's going to sh uh, shoot it on the screen at the end. Uh, but it's going to be Saturday in Bertonsville. We're meeting there. Um, to pray and close the fast on Sunday, okay? And I believe that everybody can make it and we, we should endeavor to make it. Praise the Lord. So we'll take all the precautions and everything that needs to be done. Uh, the healthcare team is hereby uh, informed to make sure everybody gets a mask or those who want uh, hand sanitizers and all those type of things. Let's make sure that all that is done properly. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you and we say thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your grace upon our lives. Thank you, Lord, that we are alive and well. Thank you, Lord, that we are strong. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy that endures forever. Thank you, Lord, that we can gather to worship you and to praise your holy name. But I will thank you that we can share your word, we can worship you, we can rejoice and get a word from you. Father, speak to us as we continue. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, by the grace of God, uh, we'll be talking about fasting and we'll continue today. And now uh, the focus on my message is taken from the book of Matthew, a statement that Jesus himself made. In <laughs> Matthew chapter 6, verse 16, Jesus said, Moreover, when ye fast, amen. amen. Jesus was teaching them scripture, and uh, he said, Moreover, when ye fast. The title of today's message is When Ye Fast. Jesus expected them to fast. He did not expect that fasting was something that was going to last only for a while. He expected that fasting would be part and parcel of the life of the believer. The believer's life is supposed to be fashioned with 
continual fasting, periodic fasting. The life of the church is supposed to be uh, empowered with fasting. Mm. So when we say it's time to fast, it should not be a burden. It should not be uh, uh, an, another load that is being added to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus Amen. Said in John chapter 4, verse 32, says, I have food to eat that you know not about. Fasting does not kill. Fasting is good for the body. I, I, I was reading a lot of things about fasting. Uh, a lot of medical, uh, in fact, the, the so-called Daniel fast is one thing that is found now in many medical journals. When you look at the fasting that Daniel did in Daniel chapter 1, in which he said he would not eat the king's meat, he would eat vegetables and other things for 10 days, it is being prescribed now by a lot of doctors to patients to go for a period of 10 days and just eat vegetables and go light on oil and oils and other things, meat, red meat especially, and all that. And they've seen a lot of health benefits in people who fast. Talking about mental acuity, a lot of people have realized that their mental acuity is better when they fast. They are sharper mentally when you're fasting. And that is one reason why spiritually people get sharper when they fast. It's not that God is not speaking, but it's just because when you fast, you can even think better. And our mental equity is invariably tied to our spiritual sharpness. Well, I'm not going to teach on that today, but it is important for us to know that man shall not live by bread alone. We need to train children to fast. We need to train adults to fast. Everybody can fast in some form, in some fashion. Hallelujah. And that is why when you go through all scripture, you realize that there were three kinds of fasting that, were, uh, that you see in scripture. The first one is a God-ordained or God-called or God-declared fast. It's a fast in which God himself tells the people, I want you to fast. Beloved, we need to be able to come to a point where we hear God's voice when he calls us to fast. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In Joel chapter 1 verse 14, it says, Sanctify ye a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord and cry unto the Lord. God is the one saying, I want you to gather everybody. Praise the Lord. God is the one who says, I want you to fast. And therefore, there are some fasts which God will call you to fast. You have to be sensitive to understand when God wants to speak to you. A lot of times we go to God only when we want to speak to him. But we, don't, we are not so quick to know when God wants to speak to us. God has many ways of calling our attention when we are distracted. Hallelujah. And God will call us when we get so distracted, when we get so carried with food, when we get so carried with the pleasures of this world and all the things of this world. God will periodically tell us, hey, stop, cut it down, pipe it down so that I can speak to you. Why? Because God cannot speak to us when we are distracted, when we are carried about with all the other things. Talk last time about how much time it takes to prepare food. It's been proven that it takes about between seven to eight hours to make a meal because you have to go, you have to think about it from the time you start thinking about it. You start con having a conception of what you want on your menu and you go to the grocery store, you buy, you come back, you forget one item and all those things, you marinate it and you just something that can be swallowed in four and a half minutes. Beloved, it, it's important for us to know that food and the pleasures of this life, the things that gratify the flesh, mm. take so much of our time. Think about how much time you save by not having to do a lot of cooking this month or during this period of fasting. It is important for us to know that these things take our time. Apart from the time, it takes our money. It takes a lot from us. It takes it away from the time we're supposed to have with God. God sometimes will say, stop what you're doing. I want your focus because he's a loving God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. 
In Isaiah chapter 58, verse 6, God himself is asking, is not this the fast that I have chosen? God is the one who chose the fast. God is the one who said, I want you to fast. Why? He says, because I want to lose the bands of wickedness. I want to undo the heavy burdens. I want to let the oppressed go free. God chooses fast for his people. And God will choose a fast for people when he wants to speak to them. Because he needs your attention. He needs your focus. That is why during a period of fasting, you spend more time in the word of God. That is why in the period of fasting, you spend more time meditating, focusing on God, writing down what God is saying to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Bible says in, in, in uh, talk about the, the, the fasting of Jesus. You know, Jesus was led to the wilderness to fast and pray. Hallelujah. Have you been led to fast and pray? Or is it just because the pastor said, let us pray? Or is it because you know that it is a ritual that you do? Whenever it is the beginning of the year, you fast and pray. Are you led? Are you periodically led into a place of prayer? Beloved, a Christian, a good Christian, should know when God is leading him to fast and pray. At times when God will declare, and through his spirit, he will lead you. He will say, I want you to fast and pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. The next one is a church declared fast. It's a fast that is declared by an authority. That authority could be your father. That authority could be your mother. That authority could be the head of a clan. That authority could be the head of a government under which you are. The, the Whatever authority you are submitted to can declare a fast. Hallelujah. Amen. So a church, a family, a nation, a people, a clan can declare a fast. When you look at uh, Leviticus chapter 16, I'm not going to read all that. Uh, Leviticus chapter 23, Numbers chapter 29, you see three different fasts which are observed. They had national days of fasting. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says it was a time that they had to fast. So whether they liked it or not, whatever was happening, when that day came, it was the seventh month, the tenth day of the seventh month. All of Israel had to fast. It happened every year. Every year, year in, year out. They had to pause. They had to stop everything. They had to pray. They had to fast. And therefore, in your family, on your life, you may have a time of fasting. Some people declare that every first day of the month, they have to fast. Some people say maybe every quarter of the, the beginning of every quarter. There was a time in my life when every month, the, the first three days of the month, I took a total fast. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. There's some times when I decided every quarter, I took a, a total fast of three days. You need to have those times which are set in your life and in your family when you fast. When it is a, 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 a an order of the day, an order to reset you, an order to reset your thinking, an order to refocus you spiritually. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You look at Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 3. The Bible says, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all of Judah. Jehoshaphat was the leader and he began to see that some things were going wrong and he declared a fast for all of Judah. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, as a father, as a parent, the leader of your household, the leader of your clan, uh, maybe the group of or the village you come from or an association, you can declare a fast. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you are a member of such a clan, or such a group of that family, you don't rebel against it. Because when you submit to leadership, there is a blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. And he proclaimed a fast for all of Judah. Beloved, we need to have family heads 
who can proclaim fast for their family. Your children should know that there are times when we proclaim a fast because we're inquiring from the Lord. We're trying to find out what God has to say to us. Your children should understand that it is part and parcel of life. Hallelujah. Amen. And whether they like it or not, whether they are believers or not, as long as they are under a certain authority, they need to understand the need of fasting. Jonah chapter 3 verse 7. The Bible says, Then he issued a proclamation in Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles. Let no man or beast or herd or flock taste anything at all. They must not eat. They must not drink. This was a declared fast. He said, not even the beast. Hallelujah. And therefore, the puppies were wondering, why are we fasting? The rats in the house were wondering, why is it that everything is sealed up? Why is it that we don't have anything to eat? He said, not even the beast, the herd, the flock, nothing was supposed to eat. He said, they must not eat, they must not drink. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the church is in a backsliding state, the pastor can sense that in the spirit and call a fast. When you see that your family is in a backsliding state, you can call a fast. Hallelujah. When you feel that your family is under siege, you can call a fast. When you feel that there is pressure, external pressure, there is trouble coming your way, you sense it in the spirit far before it strikes and you declare a fast. You don't wait until calamity strikes and then you begin to say, oh, we, we need to fast. Hallelujah. Amen. In 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 6, the Bible says, And they gathered together in Mizpeh and drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fasted on that day and said, We have sinned against thee, O Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel. Samuel realized that there was sin in the land. Samuel realized that there was sin. He was not the one sinning, but he just realized that there was an atmosphere that was stinking. In the, 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 There was an atmosphere of filth. Spiritually, the atmosphere was stinking. And he knew that that would bring the judgment of God. He knew that that would bring calamity upon his people. And he said, no, we need, we, we need to pour water on the land. It was symbolic of the dryness of the land. It was symbolic of God's blessing not coming upon them anymore. And they realized that they needed to pour water and cry out to God and fast because there's sin in the land. Do you know when there is sin in the tribe? Do you know when there's sin in the family? Do you know? Listen to me. Sin, the Bible says God's, God's blessing, God's hand is not too short that he will bless. But it is our sins that are always withholding him from us. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not just because you have so much bad luck. No, sometimes you got to check it out. It could be an issue of sin. The problem of sin is something that we need to visit and revisit in our lives. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is why you need to understand and be sensitive in the spirit. To say, is God speaking to me? Is God in his loving kindness? Is God who is so merciful? Is God whose faithfulness endures forever? Is he calling me to fast? Is he trying to catch my attention? Have I lost my focus? Am I running to and fro, helter skelter, here and there, doing everything? As a pastor, sometimes you get carried doing everything. and not focusing on God. God will have to tell you, look, you need to stop running around so you can fast. So you can, I, I, I can have your attention. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. As a family head, as a group head, as a clan head, whatever, head of a department, whatever, you can call a time of prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. Mm. The third fast year I want us to talk about is the personal fast. It's a time when God speaks to you. You are in a mist, you are in a crowd, and everybody is going about having fun, talking, playing, jumping, doing everything. But God speaks to you because 
You are different. Hallelujah. You need to understand that everybody is running on their lane. One thing that marks me so much is that when people die, they don't bury them in, they don't have mass coffins in which they put three, four, five people. Even a woman who dies in pregnancy, they always remove the, 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 the child from her stomach and bury the child separately. Beloved, you need to understand that you're running on your own lane. Let us stop this herd mentality of thinking that we are a troop always going together in one place. We do not come together on earth on the same day, the same time, through the same womb. Hallelujah. Amen. God has put us here and has given us his word and we will not all depart from here on the same time, in the same flight. Hello? Everybody's running in their own lane. That's why it's important for you. Let's look at Daniel chapter 10. Just as says Daniel's heart wanted to seek God. Hallelujah. Mm. He wanted to seek God in humility and fasting. And the Lord sent an angel to help him understand. We, we call this thing the Daniel fast, Daniel fast. Listen, it, it, it's become a religion, of course, as I said in the in, in intro, that even medical science is prescribing what they call Daniel fast. I was surprised that in, in medical journal, they call it a Daniel fast and they explain what it is. It's a name that has been attributed to it. Some people call the 21 days fast a Daniel fast. Listen to me. It, that is not what it is. Hallelujah. Amen. But it's important for you to understand what God is calling you to do. In chapter, in, in chapter 10, verse 7 of the book of Daniel, the Bible says, And I, Daniel, saw the vision. For the men that were with me saw not the vision. I, Daniel, heard God speaking to me about fasting, but the people in my family did not hear. I, Daniel, heard what God was calling me to do. Is God speaking to you as an individual? Or do you just go as a troop, as a herd? God should speak to you individually. There's one thing that marks the life of Paul. When Paul was on the way to Damascus, he himself gives his own testimony that when he saw a light, he, the, the people heard lightning, the people, uh, they heard the thunder, and they all fell off their horses. They said, I, Daniel, alone heard. Oh, my God. I, I Paul, alone heard the voice of God saying, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? There were a group of people. They were going to, to commit evil. But God spoke and one person heard. The others heard the noise. But the, Paul alone saw and heard what God said. Let's go back to Daniel chapter 10 verse 7. He says, but a great quaking fell upon them. But they fled to hide themselves. What happened here? Daniel alone saw the vision. The other people were subjected to the quake. But Daniel saw the vision. In other words, he, under, he saw some things and understood what was going to happen. And even when he saw that it was about something that was not good, he did not just take it that way. He decided to fast and pray for more understanding. Mm. He decided to, to say, look, I hear that there is noise in the land, but what is God saying to me individually? Mm. I hear that things are not going on well in the nation, but what is God saying to me as an, as an individual? I hear that the city is under siege, but what is God saying to me as an individual? Mm. Hallelujah. In verse 8, it says, Therefore, I was left alone and saw a great vision, and there remained no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned into me, uh, turned me into corruption, and I retained no strength. Hallelujah. I was left alone. Everybody left him. Everybody went to hide. Hallelujah. Listen to me throughout Scripture. 
great men, great pastors, great people who seek God, great family heads will be people who alone will seek God to hear God's voice. For you to be a good Christian, you have to be one who alone you seek God, not the one who wants to fast and pray with everybody. Listen, it's one thing for you to fast and pray with everybody. It's a good thing, right? It's a good thing for us to fast corporately. There's power in corporate fasting. But those who do not even participate in a corporate fast find it so difficult to fast and pray individually. People who have difficulties praying. I want us to understand that it's important for us to have that personal fast. As the year goes by, when you fast, it is not, well, I've already fasted with the church. No, when you fast, because during the year, you will have to fast. During the year, you have to declare a period for your family to fast. You have to fast for yourself individually. Throughout scripture, there have been people who have fasted, either because they heard God call them to fast, or they decided individually to take a period of fasting. It's important for us to know that fasting must produce something. Does your fasting, is your fasting going to produce something? In this last seven days of this fast, my prayer, my prayer for us is that we will do everything and, and cry out to God and say, Lord, speak to me. Let it be a time when we go to God and say, Lord, speak to me. Lord, I need a word from you. For if I don't hear from you, Lord, what would I do? Lord, I cannot go through 21 days of, of, of motions or fasting, not eating in the morning, coming in the evening, rushing to the kitchen and just grabbing everything from the freezer and, and licking up my pizza on the street. Listen to me. We live in a culture where there's food everywhere. But for a people to sacrifice food, for people to drive through and leave those uh, beautiful arch of, Mac, of, of McDonald's and drive through and leave the temples of Pisa, Come home and seek God and pray. There must be a result. For you to leave your three, four, five freezers full of beef and chicken and, 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 and shrimp and all those kind of things. For you to leave all those things, having money in your pocket for which you can go to any food restaurant and, and, and buy and enjoy yourself. And say you are taking a time of waiting before the Lord. Beloved, there must be, there must be, there must be, there must be a, a result to it. The result of fasting must be evident in our lives. It must be evident in our character. It must be evident in our speech. It must be evident in our finances. It must be evident in everything that we do. Hallelujah. That should be the cry of our heart for the next seven days. Lord, let me not be the same after having waited and prayed for seven days. Let my story change. Let my life change. Let there be a difference in my life. Oh God, it should be a cry from your heart. It should be a personal fast at this point. Let it be beyond a person. Let it be beyond a declared fast for the church. Let it be beyond a periodic fast for the church. Let it be beyond a time that was called for everybody to fast. Let it become something personal for you. Hallelujah. The Bible says the people of Nineveh fasted. They fasted because they heard the word of God. The word of God, which they heard from the prophet Jonah, pricked their hearts and they declared a time of fasting and the evidence was there. For more than a hundred years, the judgment of God was averted on that city. In other words, three generations down, did not see calamity. Can, do you believe that you can pray in three, four, five generations after you will feel the effect of your prayer. The kind of prayer you're putting in, the kind of fasting and prayer, the, 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 the zeal and the energy you're putting in your prayer, is that something that can even outlast you? Some people's fasting and prayer was good only for the day they fasted and prayed, was good only for that week. The following week, they've fallen back to their vomit. They've fallen back to the same Rubbish in which they were fasting and praying to come out from. May the Lord have mercy on us. 
Oh, my prayer is that our fasting and prayer will transcend this year, 2021. Transcend our generations. Bible talks about Esther, a woman who fasted. Esther 1, 2, 3, 4, you can read it. This woman heard about what was going to be before the children of God. This woman, Esther, was having a good life. She was a queen. She had all the money, she had all the food, all the gold and silver. But when she heard what was going to be fall, her own people, she sent news to them. She said, you guys, go ahead and fast. I'm going to take my own fast. I'm going to fast for three days. And she fasted and prayed. And she was fasting and praying for God to give her boldness. She was fasting and praying that God who has put her in such a strategic position will make her use the power of the position where she has been placed. She was fasting and praying that God will give her the strength that she needed and the favor. Do you know that God can give you supernatural favor? Hallelujah. When you look at your own life, don't you even feel sorry for yourself? Listen to me, during this time of fasting and prayer, we need to have introspectic, uh, we need to have an introspective look on our own lives. Sometimes you should look at yourself and feel sorry for where you're coming from. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. What is happening to you? Mm. I see some people going go, just happy go lucky, not looking at what they are losing, the time they have lost, the money they have lost, the opportunities they've lost in life. Just happy go lucky with everything. Do you know that God may have put you in places you've lost uh, opportunities that would have saved generations? Hallelujah. Jeremiah fasted and prayed. Not because he was so much in trouble, but when he heard of the broken city, the walls of Jerusalem that were broken, he said, I need to go back and rebuild it. He was, he was concerned about Jerusalem. He said, the, the city walls are broken. Broken there means that there's no defense. Broken means they are vulnerable. Do you fast and pray for the vulnerable kids in Baltimore City? Do you fast and pray for the vulnerable children in the community? Yesterday, there was a, a, a sting operation in California that was able to rescue 34 children who were uh, uh, victims of, uh, of child, uh, what do you call it, trafficking and sex slave, slavery. Do you fast and pray? What motivates you? What breaks your heart? That as an individual, you can fast and pray. There are people dying all over the world. The Christians in, 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 in China are suffering. They, they, they are being massacred. The Christians in northern Nigeria are being massacred. Last year alone, 3,500 uh, Christians were killed, slaughtered in northern Nigeria. Why in the south? They are go, happy-go-lucky, building museums that they call churches today. And everybody is having fun. When just 100, 100 kilometers up north, Christians are being massacred, are being killed. Beloved, we have become insensitive to the needs of others. But God can move you to fast and to pray for such a change to come. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible talks of a woman in the Bible, they call her Hannah. The Bible says Anna was a prophetess. Anna was a prophetess. She was married only for seven years and her husband died. And the Bible says she was a prophetess who was a widow for those years. And the Bible says her age was 85 years old. But one thing characterized Anna is that she was fasting and praying, individual solo, fasting, praying, worshiping God in the temple and her story was heard lives were transformed because of Anna fasting and praying today you are 60 years old and you think that you are the oldest grandmother who cannot fast and pray anymore today you've written away fasting but the bible talks about a woman who was 85 years old uh, 84 years old and she continued in fasting and prayer I know in this church, there's nobody who is uh, maybe one person 84 years old. Amen? Mm -hmm. 
But at that day, she still continued in fasting and prayer. Why should you not fast and pray? Why should you not give yourself to fasting and prayer? Why should you not give yourself individually? Why can't you rise up and fast and pray for the nation? Why don't you draw close to God in fasting and prayer? Hallelujah. Amen. May God cause us to fast and pray this week like never Amen. before. Amen. May God Amen. lead us and move us to look into our own lives and fast and pray like never before. Hallelujah. And let us, like the people of old, see results in our fasting. Let this fast do something for you. Let it be that at the end of this year, we can say, you fasted and you prayed. Hallelujah. Let it be known that you fasted and you prayed this year. And we saw a change in your character, in your life, in your speech, in your finances, in your family, in everything that you do. Let it be known that you've drawn closer to God. Let it be known that you hear God better. Let it be known that even the judgment of God has been averted. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Bible says in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 28, it says the hope of the righteous, the, 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 um, the amplified version puts it this way. It says the hope of the righteous, in other words, those of honorable character and integrity is joy. But the expectation of the wicked, in other words, those who oppose God and ignore his wisdom. That is what he calls people who are wicked. People who ignore God. People who ignore the word of God. People who hear the word of God and brush it aside are wicked. Hallelujah. This is the expectation of such people who come to nothing. Love one translation that says, the hope of the righteous will be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked will perish. You shall not be counted amongst the wicked in the name of Jesus. Amen. Proverbs 10, 24 says, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. Amen. The desire of the righteous shall be granted. Hallelujah. Amen. Proverbs 23, verse 18 says, for then you will have a future and your hope will not be dashed. Oh, I love that. I picked up a translation this morning. I was reading it. It was so interesting. So your hopes will not be dashed. That is what happens to a good man, a Christian, a one, the one who loves God and is seeking after God. Surely there is a future and your hope will not be cut off. My prayer is that our expectation will not be cut off. That which we expect God to do in our lives as we go through this last week of fasting, shall not be cut off. Amen. God will help us. He will sustain us. Amen. He will empower us. He will see us through in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Shall we bow our heads and pray? I want you to begin to pray for yourself. I want you to pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, as I go through the spirit of fasting this week, oh Lord, I may have not put in as much as I could. Maybe you broke your fast at 6 a.m. And then you pick it up again. By 10 a.m. you broke your fast. At 2 o'clock you broke your fast again. You've been struggling. Beloved, this week wake up. Stand up and fast and pray. Pray, pray, pray. Jesus told them that a time is coming when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. If you don't fast now and pray... The time when you will have to fast and pray may be a time when there is already calamity in the camp. My prayer, my prayer is that you'll be able to avert those things from a distance in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, help me. Pray, pray. Pray this prayer. Say, Lord, give me the strength that I need. Give me even the willpower that I need to put away television, uh, internet, and all those things so that I can... I can give myself to fasting and prayer this week in the name of Jesus. Let this church declare fast, become a personal fast to me in the name of Jesus. Pray, pray, say, Lord, even at this time when the whole church is fasting, Lord, in the name of Jesus, let me, let me fast and pray. Let me have a time in your presence. 
Let me, O oh God, focus in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray. I said, Lord, speak to me. So that, Lord, even as I go through the year, I will know when you're calling my attention. When I've gone away from your presence, when, Lord, you're calling me, oh God, calling my attention, make me sensitive enough to hear so that I may come back to the place of prayer. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh Lord, I come to you. I pray, oh God, Lord, that you will help me, oh God. Lord, help me, Lord, help me. In the name of Jesus, help me, oh God. Lord, help me in the name of Jesus, so that, Lord, I may hear your word. Lord, I may hear when you are calling me to pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, help me, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.